Welcome back to another week in speculation. I'm Joshua Go Collect, and this week we're diving into the works of Frank Miller from Daredevil to Batman and anything in between. Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out when we drop a new video. This episode contains content from our blog, so if you want to read the full story, check out the link below. But let's get started. In the late 1970s, Frank Miller began a powerhouse career that would see him redefine first Daredevil at Marvel and then Batman at DC. He created what many say are the definitive versions of these characters that heavily influenced the works of present day writers and artists. His film noir cinematic style also led to his creations making the jump from page to screen in works such as Sin City and 300. Perhaps no other comic book writer slash artist had as great of an impact on comic storytelling in the late bronze and early copper age as Frank Miller. Miller's first published work was in the pages of Twilight Zone 84, published by Gold Key in June 1978. It was a three-page uncredited story entitled Royal Feast. His first credited work was published nearly simultaneously by DC in a six-page story in Weird War Tales, number 64. While the former is credited as his first work, both are worth consideration if you're a Miller fan. There are 137 graded copies of Twilight Zone 84 in the CGC census, of which none are graded at 9.8 and only four at 9.6. The only recorded sale of a 9.6 was in 2019 when it went for $650. The most recent sale was a 4.5 graded signed copy going for $144 on July 15. Even harder to find is Weird War Tales number 64 with only 88 graded copies, although six are in the 9.8 grade. The last sale of a 9.8 was $320 in 2020, and the most recent sale, a 9.2 sold for $123 on August 11. Both are very affordable for the first work of an artist as popular as Miller. Miller continued at DC for a few months, contributing artwork to short stories and DC war-related comics, but jumped ship to work at Marvel in 1978. His first work for the publisher was also his first full issue, John Carter, Warlord of Mars, number 18. There are 142 graded copies with sales in the past year, ranging from $205 for a 9.6 to $30 for a 7.0. Miller's work at Marvel over the next year consisted primarily of fill-in pencils for interiors and the occasional cover. The most memorable of these fill-in issues was Spectacular Spider-Man number 27, an issue that featured Daredevil, and it would be Miller's first work on the character. Considered by many collectors to be his most important early work, we see a tremendous leap in the number of graded copies to 1,476. While the sale in an August 25th Comic Connect auction for $365 marks a significant downturn in the value for this issue from a high of $995 set in January 2022, it does help to make this comic more affordable than it's been in a while. Miller lobbied hard to begin working on the book Daredevil after hearing Gene Colan was leaving. His wish was granted by Editor-in-Chief Jim Shooter beginning with the now famous Daredevil 158. There are a whopping 3,379 graded copies of this book. Like the vast majority of comics, it has dropped in value over the last couple years and is still far above its late 2020 value. The most recent sale of a 9.8 in the June 7th Comic Connect auction for $1,001 is significantly higher than its December 2020 sale price of $625. Initially, Miller's first foray into the comic didn't move more issues. Daredevil had been demoted to a bi-monthly schedule due to low sales and was heavily considered for cancellation. Miller was also unhappy with writer Roger McKenzie's scripts and threatened to leave the series. Fortunately, editor Denny O'Neill saw Miller's talent and allowed him to start writing the series, beginning with Daredevil 168. This featured the first appearance of Miller's most famous creation, Elektra. There are 7,308 graded copies of Daredevil 168 in the CGC census. Recently, a 9.8 graded copy sold in the August Comic Connect auction for $3,450, far above the $2,867 90-day average and the $2,798 one-year average. So transformative was Miller's work on Daredevil that within three issues, sales climbed exponentially and the series was back on a monthly schedule. Among comic book fans at the time, Miller was all the talk for his writing and his artwork on a character that had always been considered one of Marvel's B-level heroes. 
From the incorporation of Kingpin as Matt Murdock's primary foe to the introduction of Hand and Stick to his innovative use of Bullseye, each issue brought elements to Daredevil's story that have since become canon, and it's now hard to imagine them not being part of his journey. It all came to a head in Daredevil 181 in which Miller killed off Electra. There are 6,913 graded copies of this issue. 9.8 values are on an upward swing with a 30-day average of $237, up from the $207 and $209 90-day and one-year averages, respectively. Of course, 9.8 values are kept lower than they would be expected by the presence of six 9.9 graded copies in the CGC census. The only sale of one of those was for $5,755 in 2019. Miller would continue on the series until Daredevil 191. You can pick up just about any issue in his two year run and witness some of the greatest superhero comics of, if not all time, at least within that generation of comic creators. They are truly amazing works that have heavily influenced everyone who succeeded him on the character, a testament to the revolutionary quality of Miller as a creator. In the midst of Miller's Daredevil run, he teamed with X-Men writer Chris Claremont on another comic, this one being the Wolverine miniseries from 1982. Pairing Marvel's up-and-coming popular character with one of their most popular artists of the time was a stroke of pure genius. It was lightning in a bottle and it heavily influenced the way Wolverine was depicted from that point on. Additionally, the miniseries was a relatively new invention and this series, likely more than any other to that point, showed the advantages of using a finite number of issues to tell a compact yet powerful tale. There are a mind-blowing 26,421 graded copies of Wolverine Limited Series Number 1 in the CGC census including 3 graded at 10.0 and 27 at 9.9. The only sale of one of those 10.0 copies was in 2009 for $15,535. Being that it's Wolverine's first solo series, it wouldn't be that surprising to see it rise as we get closer to the character's appearance in Deadpool 3. After Frank Miller left Marvel, he gave us Ronin, a six-part creator-owned miniseries. Fans seem to be split about the story and it's often critiqued as being a confusing mix of science fiction and samurai legends that just don't mesh well together. But others, like myself, say that the 1983 market just wasn't ready for him to branch off from superheroes just yet. Nowadays, you can likely find a 9.8 graded copy of this issue for around $100. That's about the same price it's been for a number of years, failing to experience any real upswing in the recent boom, yet also avoiding a crash as a result. Would highly recommend it for anyone looking to get into Miller on the cheaper side of things, relatively speaking. The rejection of Ronan stung Miller a bit, enough that it would be more than two long years for the world would be privy to his magnum opus. In 1986, Batman The Dark Knight Returns number one was a hurricane of a comic. It changed everything. In simple terms, there was before Dark Knight and there was after Dark Knight. Coming in the midst of DC's post-crisis renaissance, it wasn't shocking that DC would do something to focus on Batman as they had with so many other characters. But what readers received was beyond amazing. Besides being the first prestige format comic to be produced by any publisher, Miller offered fans the Batman they all secretly wanted, a grim and gritty, violent character who permanently laid rest to the outdated concept of the 1960s campy Batman television fame. It was, and until this day, nothing less than a comic publishing juggernaut that has no equal. There are 6,055 graded copies of Batman The Dark Knight Returns number one in the CGC census. One is graded at 9.9 and is never sold. For the 786 9.8 graded copies, values have dropped over the past year as evidenced by the current $870 30-day average when compared against the $1,093 one-year average. Value aside, any collector of the 1980s comics should have this issue in their collection. It is one of the most highly regarded and influential comics of the past 50 years at least, and whether graded or raw deserves its place in the hands of any collector or reef. As if The Dark Knight wasn't enough, nearly simultaneously, Miller returned to Daredevil. As writer only this time around, he teamed up with artist David Masichelli to produce the Born Again 7-issue storyline that has, as with previous work on the character, became part and parcel of the Daredevil mythos. There are 655 graded copies of Daredevil 227, the first part of the story in the CGC census. While an initial jump to a slightly above $1,000 occurred in the 9.8 grade upon the announcement of Daredevil Born Again on Disney+, it has since dropped down to values just north of 200, 
still nearly double what it went for in early 2021. A year later, Miller and Masakelli teamed up once more, this time for the year one storyline, beginning with Batman 404. A smart and succinct four-part story that delved into Batman's origins, it was yet another work by Miller that added to the Cape Crusaders mythology in a way that has since become canon. With the plentiful 4,028 graded copies, it's not very hard to find. Selling for nearly $400 at the peak of the recent boom, 9.8 copies now sport 30-day and 90-day averages of just under $200. It's worth noting that Frank Miller also briefly moved to Hollywood where he worked on the script for 1990's Robocop 2 and eventually also worked on Robocop 3. Ultimately, he claims to have had a bad experience with writing since so much of what he wrote was changed by the directors. His Robocop scripts were eventually made into the comic Frank Miller's Robocop by Avatar Press. Leaving the two major publishers behind, Miller bounced around creator-owned projects with multiple artists published by Dark Horse. So it was with this publisher in 1991 that Miller would release his longest running work, Sin City. Fully written and drawn by Miller, the story began publication with Dark Horse Presents' fifth anniversary special number one. There are 266 graded copies of the most recent sale of a 9.8 for $850 on June 28th. The series would go on to the big screen in a film directed by Robert Rodriguez and Frank Miller himself which Miller has said was the exact opposite of his experience with Robocop, and he can't say enough things about working with the actors and Rodriguez alike. Miller's last great artistic work was the five-issue miniseries 300 published by Dark Horse in 1998. Detailing the historical battle of 300 Spartans versus the might of Persia in 480 BC in all of its violent bloody glory, the series would also go on to cinematic fame in a film directed by Zack Snyder. There are 671 graded copies of 300 number one, including six graded at 10.0. The last sale in a 2015 heritage auction was for $478, although earlier sales in the year prior were for twice and nearly three times that amount. It's hard to say what one of those 10.0 copies would go for now. Frank Miller's work on Daredevil and Batman is among some of the most lauded in the industry. Any writer or artist working on either character since Miller knows the weight of the standards he set. Nearly as important as his work on Wolverine with Chris Claremont, even though it was only four issues in length. His cinematic style has led to much of his work appearing in film or television in some way, shape, or form. However, if he produced nothing else, Miller will forever be remembered as the writer-artist who brought the world Batman The Dark Knight Returns, one of the great comic works of the copper or any other era. Do you collect Frank Miller's works? What are some of your favorites? Let us know in the comments below. That does it for this week. Once again, check out the blog linked down in the description below, and be sure to check out our price guides for graded comics, video games, concert posters, and graded magazines. Thanks so much for tuning in for another week in spec. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a video. See you next week.